plants have it made? I mean, just look down there. Millions of huge plants growing like crazy. Not a grocery store in sight and no pizza delivery. We humans have to eat several times a day. Someone has to feed us, at least until we're old enough to open the fridge. Dandelions and oak trees never ask what's for dinner. We eat plants and other animals because we're the most advanced life form on the planet, right? Well, don't get too puffed up. We eat them because, unlike those plants, we can't get along on just air, water, and sun. We say to plants, I can't do that, so I'll eat you instead. And when we eat animals, we eat the plants those animals have processed into usable food. And eat we do. You will eat about 100,000 pounds of food in your lifetime. That's 50 tons. About 17 big elephants. You eat all this food because you need four things. Water, energy, proteins, and small amounts of vitamins and minerals. They explain why we need food and what nutrition is all about. Of the four, water is the most urgent. We can live surprisingly long without food, but only a matter of days without water. The surface of planet Earth is about 70% water. But did you know that from half to two-thirds of your weight is also water? This is how much water the average adult contains. Men with a higher proportion of muscle to fat usually have a higher percentage of water than women. Water is heavy stuff. A gallon of water weighs over eight pounds. So when you hear about rapid weight loss from a hot new diet, it's really about losing water, dehydration. If you lose weight quickly, you might say, hey, I'm five pounds drier this week. After all, what's a raisin but a grape that lost weight from dehydration? How much water do you need each day? About a quart of water for each thousand calories you use. That means a typical adult male who uses 2,500 calories needs about two and a half quarts of water. But you don't need to get all that water from the tap or a bottle. Food contains lots of water. Take this orange. It weighs 12 ounces. Now we'll put it in an oven to dry it out. Here's our orange after its quick weight loss. It lost weight because it dried out. Over 80% of an orange's weight is water. You might call this a toaster, but it's also a bread dehydrator. Heat evaporates the free water on the bread surface. That's why toast is crispy. Watermelon is 92% water by weight. Lettuce, 95%. Even meat is 70%. On average, food is two-thirds water, much like your body. So some of the two to four quarts of water you need daily comes from food. You don't have to make a water bottle part of your wardrobe. Why do you need water? Flex a muscle, any muscle. You just use water. Blink your eyes. You can't do it without water. Water also carries oxygen and nutrients to your cells, cushions your joints, converts food into energy, and helps remove waste. You use water constantly. You sweat when you do nothing. Put your hand in a plastic bag, and in a few minutes, you'll see water on the surface. That's sweat. Your body throws off water even when not active. It's how you keep a steady body temperature. In hard exercise, you can lose over a quart and a half of water in an hour. A typical adult drinks about 70 ounces of water a day and gets 30 ounces from food and water in equals water out. During a day, you lose about 54 ounces in urine and feces, 30 ounces through sweat, and 17 ounces in water vapor. You breathe out water every time you exhale. Your body temperature rises if you don't have enough water to perspire. Sweating is your built-in sprinkler system. A few degrees over 98.6, and it's called a fever. At around 105 degrees, it's a heat stroke, which can be deadly. At a loss of 3% of your body weight in fluids, you notice signs of dehydration, which include dry lips and mouth, weakness or dizziness, 
headache or nausea, and muscle cramps. Some of these same symptoms occur after drinking too much alcohol. Alcohol, although a liquid, draws water from the body. It dehydrates. Part of a hangover is dehydration. Drinking six to eight glasses of water a day avoids triggering your thirst impulse. But with age, you lose some ability to judge your need for water. This puts the elderly at greater risk from dehydration. Water provides no energy. That's another way of saying it has no calories. And that's the second nutrition basic, energy. Here's a question for you. Which of these can you not see, even with a microscope? Fat, calories, carbs, or protein? You can see fat even without a microscope. And proteins and carbs are both chains of molecules. Proteins have more interesting shapes. But even with the most powerful microscope, you can't see a calorie. That's because a calorie is not a thing. It's a measurement of energy. So how many calories do you burn swimming or working out? None. OK, it's a trick question. You can't actually burn a calorie any more than you can burn an inch. A calorie is a measure. So you can't really eat calories either. Here's a little secret. Food makers do not hire experts to count the calories in their foods. They measure fat, carbs, and protein, then derive the calorie count from that. In fact, you can do it yourself. Have someone show you a food label and cover up the number of calories. Announce you can predict how many calories are in a serving. Here's how. You need to know that each gram of fat gives nine calories while each gram of carbohydrate or protein provide four. Do a little mental arithmetic and you can count the calories. Fats, proteins, and carbohydrates all provide energy. Fat provides more than twice as much energy per ounce as proteins or carbohydrates. But why does fat give more energy? Fat gives more energy than carbohydrate and protein, yet all share the same basic ingredients, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But carbohydrate generally contains more hydrogen and oxygen as water, H2O. That's why it's called a carbohydrate. In fat or protein, the oxygen and hydrogen don't combine to make as much water. In other words, fat or protein are not as hydrated. Just as water in equals water out, energy in equals energy out. The energy out is burned in activity. Energy in is the calorie value of the food we eat. If we eat more energy than we use, we store it in the form of fat. A pound of fat stores about 3,500 calories. To lose a pound of fat, you have to use 3,500 more calories than you take in. That means a 150 pound person has to jog at a nine minutes per mile pace for over four hours to lose just one pound. How far could a person run on the energy provided by each of these foods? The lettuce leaf won't get you much past the 50 yard line. The bread fuels 550 yards of running. The pizza, 1100 yards. And the chocolate bar, 2200 yards. You need energy 24-7. Your heartbeat and breathing alone uses about a calorie every minute. You need energy to think. You need it to replace over two million new red blood cells every second. You need it to grow the over three million hairs on your body. You use calories just to veg out. An adult male needs about 12 calories for each pound of body weight. Figure about 11 calories a pound for females. The more energy you use, the more additional calories you need. Nutritionists recommend you get energy from a variety of foods. 55% from carbohydrates, 15% from proteins, and 30% or less from fats. Every cell in your body needs a sugar called glucose, and the best source is food with carbohydrate. In fact, 
your brain can use only glucose for fuel and your brain needs lots of energy. Thinking is hard work. That's why over half your calories should come from carbs, especially carbs that provide other nutrients. For example, a can of pop is all carbohydrate, but it supplies no other nutrients. A slice of whole wheat bread is also a carb, but it supplies iron, B vitamins, calcium, fiber, and other nutrients. Table sugar and flour are both carbohydrates. Tasting sugar can be pleasant, but you might gag on a spoonful of flour. Yet both are made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The main difference is that sugar is a smaller molecule that fits into the sweetness taste buds in your tongue. Flour has longer chains of molecules that don't fit. That's why it's called a complex carbohydrate, and table sugar is a simple carbohydrate. Your body gets energy from either one. It doesn't care, but your taste buds do. The energy in carbs is easier to use, but fat supplies more energy per ounce. You need about an ounce of fat a day for the fatty acids they supply. Fat helps keep you warm gives energy and helps cushion your body organs. Fat carries some vitamins to cells and keeps brain and nerve cells working. Without fat, you die. You get fats mainly from meat, dairy foods, nuts, and some vegetables. Animal fat is solid at room temperature, while vegetable fats are liquid at room temperature. They're oils. Most of the fat you eat should come from liquid fats. All three energy sources are sometimes condemned as evil. Fad diets blame either sugar, fat, or carbs for all sorts of health problems. So food makers come up with foods containing little or none of whichever is the currently popular evil. But we can use energy from all three for balanced nutrition. You've heard, we are what we eat. Luckily, that doesn't mean you will turn into the creature from the whipped lagoon by eating too many cream puffs. You have the genetic knowledge to take apart a cream puff or a fish and reassemble it into you. You eat in order to turn other organisms into you. Each of the trillions of cells in your body is made mainly of water and protein. Your cells don't live as long as you do. That means your body is a construction site throughout your life. You've seen those low-budget flicks where human-like creatures are shot and burned and generally mashed, yet manage to regenerate missing body parts. Hey, you do that every day. Scratch your arm right now. Go ahead. You just flaked off thousands of dead skin cells. You shed 30 to 40,000 skin cells a minute and you replace them all. The skin you have today is not the same skin you had two months ago. Like a sci-fi cyborg, you grow new skin. In fact, you grow over nine pounds of new skin every year. And it's not just skin. You constantly rebuild all your body parts. In the last minute, your stomach replaced half a million cells in its lining. You completely reline your stomach every three days. That's protein at work. Your body breaks food down into small protein units called amino acids, made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Protein is an important source of nitrogen. Each protein is made of amino acids linked like beads in a necklace. We use about 20 different kinds of amino acids and arrange them into thousands of proteins much like using 26 letters in the alphabet. It's like you have a protein production plant that uses 20 amino acids as raw ingredients. 11 you can make in-house on the factory floor, but the others you have to have delivered from food. Animal protein contains all the essential amino acids you need to make proteins. That's the main reason people eat animals. We also get protein from plants but plants do not provide all the amino acids at once. The food with a nearly perfect balance of amino acids is the egg. The best plant source is the soybean, 
which does supply all the essential amino acids. As we age, we become less effective at making protein. Muscle mass, that's protein tissue, declines while fat often increases. That's why muscle seems to turn to fat in old age. In reality, muscles cannot turn into fat any more than your hand could turn into a nose. In short, the answer to the question, what do you do with protein, is just about everything connected with living. We mine the earth for all sorts of minerals, iron, copper, aluminum, nickel, and hundreds more. But you also need minerals in food. Plants trap minerals washed from rocks by rain or dissolved in leaves. The minerals in your body right now are all recycled. The iron in your blood may once have been a part of a cliff in Arizona centuries ago. From food, you need a whole variety of minerals, from iron and calcium to zinc and cobalt. Other chemicals we get from food in very small amounts are called vitamins and are commonly named by letters of the alphabet, A, B, C. These vitamins are chemicals we have to get from food. We cannot make them on our own. Vitamins help almost every chemical reaction in your body. You need vitamin C to make collagen. That's a protein that makes your skin strong yet elastic. Without vitamin K, blood doesn't clot and a nosebleed could be fatal. Without vitamin B12, you can't make red blood cells. A balanced diet gives the vitamins you need, but many nutritionists recommend a daily multivitamin supplement to fill any gaps. Something else you need from food is dietary fiber. Remember that orange we dried out earlier? The water is held in place by membranes. You can see them here. You can't digest this tough plant material, but you need about an ounce a day to help digest food. One orange supplies about a fourth of the fiber you need in a day. Most of this dietary fiber is cellulose, a strong rubbery material that makes up the walls of plant cells. Most fiber is too small to see, except in plants like celery and rhubarb. Vitamins, minerals, and fiber do not add to muscle strength, supply energy, or cure diseases. Some view nature as a kindly mother who wishes only to protect her children. They assume what is natural must be good and harmless. But nature is more complex and filled with substances that both cure and kill that build or destroy. For example, you need chromium from food, yet only a few times the amount you normally eat is poisonous. Many essential vitamins and minerals are toxic in larger amounts. We are all recycling experts. The frozen yogurt you had for dessert yesterday was made up of molecules that may have once been part of a dinosaur, a person who lived in ancient Greece, or a slug beneath the sea eons ago. All creatures, those alive now and those long dead, feed one another. Nutrition is part of the ongoing process that is life on this planet.